and we just hit the 5,000 mark for inventory levels. Inventory continues to grow, but what I found very interesting is that the rate of growth, it's been slowing down. But more on that in just a couple moments. Plus, the Fed, they're definitely going to be decreasing interest rates, but probably not why you think. It's all about the bank bailouts. And us on Wall Street, well, we end up taking the punch to the gut. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo market in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update. And we're talking about some relevant recent current events. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then know I'm here to help. The rules for real estate change in August. Buyers will have to pay their buyer agent fee when buying a house. And we are already seeing a bunch of sellers making buyers do it now, actually. If you don't want to pay 25 or 3% of the purchase price when buying a new house, then take a look at the Purchase Power Plan. In this plan, buyers pay for our services by the hour instead of the percentage of the purchase price. This can save home buyers possibly tens of thousands of dollars. Reach out if you're looking to buy a house and want to save a small fortune on fees. Let's jump into the single family market. Last week, I said we were on the march for 5,000 units. Well, we marched a month or so ago. My prediction was hitting around 5,500 unit high for the year. Now, I feel pretty good about that prediction right now. We now have 5,010 single family houses on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This is 9.2% more than the houses on the market just 28 days ago. The last time we had more houses on the market was the week of November 14th in 2022. We had 5,304 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. You can see here what I meant by the rate of increase slowing down. It is falling short of the 2022 levels, but a little above the 2023 levels. We now have 1,043 more houses on the market when compared to the same week last year, 53 more houses on the market today than compared back in 2022. Buyers today have more than 1,000 units to choose from the same time last year. That's exceptional news if you're a home buyer. Now, new listings are down week over week, again, but still ahead in 2023 levels, again. This week, we listed 1,260 single family houses in the state of Massachusetts. This is 145 units or 13% more than the same week back in 2023. Now, four week rolling average is 1,306 units. This week, we put 1,163 single family houses under agreement. Now, this is 109 units or 10.3% higher than the same week last year. We put 1,054 homes under agreement. This was another great bump in sales year over year. Now, a four week rolling average is 1,080 units for under agreement. So, when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 13%, while under agreements, they were up by 10.3%. The pennies to new listing ratio is 84.3%. We had 1,163 units that went under agreement this week, which is compared to the 1,380 listings that came on the market just two weeks ago. The 84.3% is compared to 90.8% that we saw the same week back last year. The average for last four weeks is 91.2% compared to the average of five through eight weeks being 89.8%. There were 765 single family houses that sold last week for an average sales price of $872,000 and a median sales price of $705,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were up by 64 units or 9.1% because there were 701 single family houses that closed this week last year for an average sales price of $829,000. Now months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in, zero to five months. That's considered a seller's market. The closer you get to zero, the more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. Now, this week, months of inventory actually fell to 2.16 months compared to last week's 2.18 months. Now, the 2.16 months this week is compared to 1.76 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, on to the condo market. We now have 2,895 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, this means that there is 6.8% more inventory on the market today than the inventory levels just 28 days ago. The last time we had this much inventory on the market in the condo market was back on the week of October 25th of 2021. We now have 567 more units on the market today than today last year, 204 more units than compared to the inventory levels of 2022 and seven units more than the inventory levels back in 2021. There were 554 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 521 units. 554 units listed 
was 87 units or 18.6% more than the 467 condos that came on the market this week back in 2023. Another week of new listings coming in higher than last year while under agreements, well, they fell short, barely. This week, we put 444 units under agreement. This 444 condo sales was three units for 0.7% less than last year when we put 447 condos under agreement. Like I said, barely. Now, the four week rolling average for under agreements is 433 units. So, 18.6% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 0.7% fewer condos. Another week of a pretty substantial imbalance. The condo Pemex new listing ratio was 76.2%. This is compared to 89.5% that we saw this time last year. That's a big year over year difference. The average for the last four weeks is 91.4%, which is compared to 85.3% for weeks five through eight. Now, there were 375 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $762,000 and a median sales price of $580,000. This same week, last year, there were 335 condos that sold. So sales levels, they were up by 11.9%. Months of inventory fell to 2.52 months from last week's 2.53 months. This is compared to the months of inventory levels of 2.05 months this week last year. Any chance you can do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference for me as well as the channel. It just plays with that YouTube algorithm. Well, subscribing, if you haven't done that and you're enjoying the content, that one doesn't hurt either. So please consider subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates though. This was a pretty good darn week for interest rates. And we can thank the consumer price index data from last week for it. Now, I don't see many market movers this week with economic data, but we do have the existing home sales numbers on Friday. I think we should be prepared for, well, an ugly number on this one. I said earlier that the Fed is going to cut this year. They will start cutting this year, but it's not because they think they have won the inflation war. But to that extent, be prepared for some very sketchy stats from the BLS. They're going to paint a picture that the inflation war, it's been won. But anyone who's been to a grocery store recently knows that this is a load of you know what. So the Fed is going to cut rates this year and they will cut them into next year as well, but not to help you and I. It's all about bailing out the banks. Want proof or receipts as to why this is going to happen? No matter what inflation does, According to the latest data from the FDIC, the U.S. banking system is sitting on $517 billion in unrealized losses due to deteriorating bond portfolios. You heard that right. Banks are sitting on over a half trillion dollars in losses. Unrealized losses amount to 9.4% of the $5.47 trillion in securities held by commercial banks. Why would unrealized losses matter? It's because it's the unrealized losses that triggered the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and First Republic Bank in 2023. Then we had a fourth one in 2024. I think we all understand the problem in seeing those numbers, but how did this problem occur? It's because as interest rates rise, the price of treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities, they fall. So the Fed increasing interest rates is what has caused these losses. And if the Fed decreases interest rates, then it will help alleviate some of these losses. Now, the conventional wisdom is that unrealized losses, they're not a big deal. It's because they only become losses if banks try to sell those bonds. If the banks hold the bond to maturity, then they don't lose anything. The Wolf Street quote says it best. In reality, unrealized losses matter a lot. Um, as we saw with the four collapsing banks after depositors figured out what's on their balance sheets and yanked their money out. This forced the banks to try to sell those securities, which would have forced them to take those losses, at which point there wasn't enough capital to absorb the losses, and the banks, they collapsed. Oh, and according to the FDIC, the number of problem banks increased from 52 to 63 in the first quarter. And by the way, the FDIC will not release the names of the banks that are problem banks. Now, the reasoning is that they don't want to release the names and create a run on those banks, which will guarantee a bank collapse. Makes sense. So basically, though, you and I are just left hoping and praying that, well, our money is in a safe bank. And this doesn't even include the issues with the commercial real estate market. It's regional banks that hold 70% of all commercial real estate loans. Banks with less than $250 billion in assets hold more than 80% of commercial real estate loans. And according to the Mortgage Bankers Association, around $1.2 trillion of commercial real estate debt in the United States will mature in the next two years. It's the one-two punch of why the Fed needs to bail out the banks by lowering interest rates. Inflation and Main Street folks be damned. 
us taxpayers, well, we're about to be on the hook for another round of bank bailouts. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs again? It's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next night or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you know anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my contact information. You can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.